Sampola. My name is Pem Zam and I'm working at the Royal Botanical Garden under the National Biodiversity Centre Sarbetang as a biodiversity officer. The Royal Botanical Garden was established in the year 1999 to commemorate the Silver Jubilee celebration of His Majesty the Fourth to Galpo's Golden Reen. It serves as an ex situ living plant conservation area and it also acts as an environmental educational resource center for students and general visitors. To emphasize on the importance of biodiversity conservation, the Royal Botanical Garden recently inaugurated the Biodiversity Interpretation Center, a first of its kind in Bhutan. It is a one-stop hub that provides an overview of Bhutan's biodiversity. It was established with the main objective to spread awareness on the rich biodiversity of Bhutan and to advocate on the importance of biodiversity conservation. The Biodiversity Information Center is dedicated to His Royal Highness, uh, the first Kelsey of Bhutan, Kelsey Jigmin Namgyewanchu, in commemoration of his Kelsey's fifth birth anniversary. Basic information here we have displayed are the object, common objects, the images, interpreted uh, text, and the audiovisual on the uh, different documentaries on our programs. And moreover, the, the aims to uh, put the different uh, uh, small, small sections on the different corners. We have like 42 corners uh, to give. Uh, the uh, overview on the information. Thus here we have uh, the display on the plant in religion. So here we have a basic uh, or common display on the pl plant that are important in our religion like Oro Zaylam, Namkaling, Tsakusha, Timukti, Pemameto, these are some of the commons. Here we have uh, display on the cultural objects that are uh, used by our Buddhist people. So we have kept as a Buddhist biocultural collection, which is very important to give our cultural relationship with the, the environment and also the plant. Here is a display of natural dyes. So here we have displayed the common natural dyes uh, plants that are used in our common uh, Buddhist culture. So here we have a uh, display of images and the, uh, the nature, uh, physical objects, some of the common dyes that are used. These are the plant stem that are uh, used for the yellow dye. And some from the leaves, leaves dye, and some from fruit dye. Fruit. Here is the display of our common terrace and medicine that are used in our so uh, Rikpala and as well as in our local users and here we have displayed the Sependes Radak uh, Nakapani Smula Nakapani then Putishing Aru Baru Churu Mula Thus here is the display of our common Yartsa Genbubla Kodisevla so everybody knows uh, Yartsa Genbubla I think this is uh, this June month is the right time for the Kodisev collection. So these are the, some of the characters uh, for the children, uh, how they looks like, and how these are important. These are the, some of the common uh, texts that we have put. Uh, here is a display of our typical Buddhist Salyarim. These are the common. Uh, important and significant species of the three species that are used in our uh, traditional as well as in the re religion purpose. La. So example like uh, this is the Pausulzia rugulusala dar. This is uh, one species that uh, is commonly used in the Kankar la, to make a palang. La. And these are the sal, agarwood, tagwashing, tectonogrin, and uh, teak. And even we have uh, displayed for the children to know about the, the tree's age. So from uh, different trees, they have like uh, 
they will give different age la. depends on their growth mole so this corner is uh, for the common ornamental plant la. so in this uh, lighted box la, this plant species are most native la, native ornamental la. here is the corner for the insects diversity of Bhutan la. so here we have displayed only the common insects that are found across the, the Bhutan. Still, there is a lot more to come here. And currently, with the literature and the published uh, documents, we have uh, current records like the moth, 1,115 species, butterflies, 753 species, dragonflies and damselflies, 94 species, and bees and wasps, uh, 84 species. So with the diversity of insects, there is also diversity in their life stages, la, life cycle. La. So here we have uh, mainly shows their two life cycle, la. incomplete and complete life cycle la, insects they have. La. So here one is with egg, larva, pupa and adult stage. La. And one with this uh, dragonflies, grasshopper, they shows like incomplete uh, life cycle, la. egg, nymph and adult. La. Here is the corner for incense. La. Here we have displayed some of the common plant parts that are used to make uh, incense in a button. La. So here we have displayed only 10 uh, common species. La. Uh, actually, there is uh, more, la, more numbers, but uh, these are the, some of the common species that are used in Bhutan. So, example like uh, Ruta Mul, Ruta, Aruba, uh, Palu, Sulu, Shoop, these are the some most common. Uh, over here we have the silk and silkworm corner. As we are all aware how silk is popular in Bhutan, especially with women, uh, they wear silk, uh, wonju, tego and kira. So we have displayed uh, different types of silk and silkworms. So according to the species of plant that the silkworm feeds on, we obtain different types of silk, like uh, mulberry silk, airy silk, tassar silk and muga silk. Uh, we have displayed some of the silk, uh, most commonly available silk in Bhutan, uh, as displayed here. So the kids or the visitors, they are aware of how silk is produced. And over here we have the life history of silk, silkworm. So first they lay their eggs on the leaves of the plants, and then they uh, turn into mature caterpillars, and then they develop a cocoon uh, over themselves. And once the uh, caterpillar is ready, they turn into an uh, adult um, butterfly or a moth and then afterwards these cocoons are taken by uh, people and then they harvest the silk from these cocoons. In this corner we have the panel for bees and wasps and also the pollination panel. Uh, in Bhutan we have over 40 species of bees and we are and it is important to advocate on the importance of bees because bees are the sole pollinator and they always help in sustaining the uh, agriculture and food security. Uh, over here in this corner, we have fun facts about seeds. Uh, as we are all aware, there are different types of seeds ranging from their sizes. So here we have an instrument which is called a microscope. So it, uh, what it does is it helps in magnifying the seeds, especially the orchid seeds, which are very tiny and it is not visible to the human eye. So uh, with the help of this microscope, we can see the very tiny uh, microscopic seeds of an orchid. So these are the plants of the world. So here uh, we show the different parts of the roots and stems and also the different sizes and different uh, shapes and everything. So similarly, we, are also, we have also for the leaves. So here they also show the different sizes, different shapes of the leaves and different alteration, different uh, arrangement of the leaves. So this is how we basically learn the identification of the plants. So similarly, we have for the flowers and fruits. So, so we have like different kinds of fruits as well. So we need to, uh, we, we wanted to create awareness among the students and tourists that uh, uh, identification of the plants are based on the different parts and different sizes, different shapes of the roots, leaves and fruits. And coming to the plants in Bhutan, so as Bhutan being the 
uh, part of the Himalayan, Eastern Himalayan global hotspots. So we have like more than 4,500 species of plants, vascular plants, uh, which are commonly known as flowering plants, which bear these seeds. So here uh, we conduct lots of other researches like exploration of new species, new to Bhutan, and then also species that are new to the science. So yearly we discover like uh, one or two species that are new to the science and then we name accordingly to the scientific uh, nomenclatures. And coming to the posters here, we have uh, the living uh, plant fossil species known as uh, Tetracentral sinensis, which are, uh, we can find at uh, Tochula and also in eastern parts like Yangtze. And coming to the red list species, so red listing is basically the uh, categorization of the uh, threatened plant species like critically endangered, endangered, threatened, near near threatened, extinct and all. So coming to the uh, plants here, so these are the, some of the threatened plant species like this orchid, a lady sleeper orchid known as Pepepedilum ferianum. So this is a, a endangered species, so mostly found in southern belts uh, in the limestone areas. And also we have some few Meconopsis blue puppy species which are also uh, threatened, threatened to the threatened to globally threatened, and similarly we have a uh, 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 dis dis display of deciduous plants, timber species, and also invasive species. And coming to the deciduous plants, uh, we have only one species, which is a deciduous coniferous uh, tree species, which is large Larix graviti. And coming to the invasive plant species, uh, we have like. Uh, 16 plant species, which are a major invasive plant species in Bhutan. So for example, we have like Lantana camera are pictured here. So these are invading in the agricultural lands and then invading the native plant species. Uh, if, uh, and then uh, these uh, invasive plant species are mostly introduced from uh, neighboring countries and then they're eroding the native plant species and then invading the agricultural and forest plant species. And coming to the plant samples here, so these are the few examples of the plant uh, parts used as a food and other other uses. So we, for example, like we have the uh, Dioscoria, which is also known as uh, yam. So these are mostly eaten in uh, eastern and then southern belts. So this is uh, these are uh, this uh, yam Dioscoria species. They are also uh, used in religious ceremonies and offerings in eastern parts. So coming to the mammals of Bhutan, so we have like uh, uh, nearly around 200 species of mammals in Bhutan, which are uh, recorded through evidence based, or based on camera trappings by the Department of Forest and Park Services. So coming to the mammals display here, so we also have a display of a few threatened species according to the red listing, uh, which, which is carried out by IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, which is also known as World Conservation Union. So for example, like we have here Chinese pangolin, Manis petatactyla. So this is also a, one of the critically endangered species also found in southern belts and the temperate regions of the forest. And it is also one of the most uh, illegally traded species in Bhutan. So similarly, we have like Mark's deer and also the Royal Bengal tiger here. So we also have a few display of other uh, species of plants, uh, other species of mammals, we, uh, for example, like pygmy, pygmy hawk and red panda, which are very elusive and rarely spotted. La. So these are uh, these species are mostly uh, uh, they require the conservation efforts from the uh, government. La. So coming to the birds of Bhutan, la, so we have more than uh, 750 species of birds as of 2020, la. and here we have like a. Similarly, we have threatened species like like blaze dragon, uh, palace fish eagle, and then red-headed vultures, and then also the white bellied heron. So we also had the uh, threatened uh, black neck crane, but now it is categorized as vulnerable by the red list uh, IUCN. And coming to the uh, Molluscs diversity of Bhutan, uh, Molluscs uh, falls under the invertebrate group cat category. So invertebrates group are the one of the most uh, largest groups of biodiversity in the world. So in Bhutan, we have been carrying out the inventory of the invertebrates. So here we are focusing on the snails, Molluscs. And uh, Molluscs are one of the mostly used uh, the shells are mostly used for religious purposes, which is also known as tungkar in Zonghal. 
So we, are, we have more than 90 species of Molluscs species in Bhutan snails. So for example, like we have like a uh, gulls, uh, uh, giant African land snail, so which has been, which is the invasive snail species uh, in Kelposhing. So it has been causing lots of problem to the community in Kelposhing. So this is uh, one of the, uh, this is where we have to uh, intervene and then carry out one of the strategies to irrigate this kind of invasive species in Bhutan. So similarly, we have been documenting lots of other snail species. So this is uh, one of the four kinds of mussels found in Bhutan. So this is one of the uh, largest uh, mussels found in Bhutan. So we also have other smaller, smaller uh, mussels found in Bhutan. So like, likewise, we have documented uh, lots of other uh, Snail species. So, like likewise, we have also found uh, one of the sna uh, smallest snail species in Bhutan, one of the snail species in the world, la, which is also found in Bhutan in 2019. La, research uh, carried out by NBC and other collaborators. La. So, coming to the protected area system in Bhutan, la, so uh, we are showing the protected areas, uh, which uh, is mostly uh, around 51 percent of the countries under protected area, which includes five national parks and four wildlife sanctuaries, and also seven biological corridors. And these biological corridors are interlink interlinking all the protected areas, which uh, serves as a pathway for the mammals and other market migrating species in the protected areas. Similarly, we are also showing the forest cover of Bhutan, which is around 71% of the countries. Here we have a, a displaying the subtropical region, temperate region, and subalpine region, and the alpine region. So we basically have around four different zones of for, uh, forest in the country. Mm -hmm.